C.H. is true, and this is a video response to the book Where Mathematics Comes From by George Lakoff and Rafael Nunez. It's a, it's a fascinating book, uh, very dense, and George Lakoff is a linguist. Uh, he's not a mathematician, but you would know it from this book. It's solid mathematics and solid rigor all the way through. I'm going to disagree with the premise of the book and what he's trying to say, but I do have respect for the scholarship. Um, I have respect for George Lakoff as a political philosopher. I, I've learned a lot by listening to him on our local public access, uh, pardon me, our local um, public broadcasting station. Um, in particular, the study of how language has been utilized by politicians for control. I, I kind of had a twinkle in my eye and I thought of him when there was a... Uh, a debate around a new law or a proposed law to mandate a certain kind of correct way of doing social studies, a very politically correct way of doing social studies where students will memorize the speeches of Ronald Reagan and they'll read Thomas Paine's Common Sense. And I remember thinking, I'll agree with that. But in true George Lakoff tradition, in addition to the speeches of Ronald Reagan, they should also read the speeches of Eugene Debs. And they should also read the speeches of, um, of, of um, various labor leaders. And in addition to Thomas Paine's Common Sense, they should read The Age of Reason from Thomas Paine, An Agrarian Justice. Why not? Hey, we want to have the whole history, right? Or maybe the politicians don't actually want us to really critically think, but maybe they want us to have a very narrow range of opinions. But I would say in true Lakeoff fashion, um, that was the little twinkle in my eye, and that would be my response. And I would trust George Lakoff and Noam Chomsky and Howard Zinn to all get together and come up with the, uh, the curriculum for that one. But all political sarcasm and joking aside, uh, he truly is a great thinker, and I don't disagree with him lightly, but I'm going to um, have to. So, yes, what's his claim? The claim is that mathematics arose through natural selection, but then also through cultural selection. It arose because it was useful on the savanna, and then in, it also arose because of cultural forces in the West that, um, that shape Western thought, and, and, and in other cultures too. Um, India had a very advanced mathematical, and still does have a very advanced mathematical tradition, and that they were these were shaped by cultural forces. Um, so how could you possibly disagree with that? It's not possible to disagree with it, but where I would disagree with him is when he states that it that means that it's only that, that there is no reality to mathematics beyond that. If I say that something survived cultural selection, what I am stating is that, that the traits that something had survived and were found useful. Something that survived natural selection, I would similarly state that the traits that survived natural selection have been found useful. What that means is that every step of the way, the mathematical art was found to be a logical solution to problems. So, Let's back the question. Why is, was something that was useful as a skill in ancient Egypt in surveying farmland, how is that still applicable today? Well, Lake, Professor Lakoff would probably say um, that the reason this is the case is because we live in a certain type of universe, and that type of universe obeys certain types of scientific laws, and that um, we approach the question of mathematics from the question of our experience. And I would say that, yes, he is correct. Mathematics does come, our understanding of these things are, are useful as an adaptation to nature and to culture based on a set of experiences. But then why do those experiences then demand this adaptation? At some point, you're going to have to say that it's because we live in a logical universe. We live in a universe where calculus seems to describe uh, Newtonian physics and Einstein's physics very well. Even into quantum theory, we still have uh, Fourier transforms, and we still have a uh, need for calculus. And so it is that calculus, though 
I will agree with him that there are some concepts in calculus, like the concepts of limits, that arose more out of the uh, phil philosophy and the philosophical debates of the time. And I will agree with him that a lot of the ideas in set theory um, also arose out of philosophy. That the fundamentals of quantifiable mathematics, or, or quantitative, excuse me, quantitative mathematics, seem to correspond to a logic that's inherent in the universe itself. Now, is this true of set theory? Well, we can, you know, we can debate that one. Is this true of the concepts of infinities and limits? We can debate that one. But it certainly is true of quantity itself. Number. One need not be a Pythagorean to note that number seems to describe our, our physical reality and also our intuitive sense of metaphysical reality. And by metaphysical, I'm not talking about uh, ascended angels and, and uh, reincarnations of Egyptian princesses and things like that. I'm talking about metaphysics in the sense of our um, idea space. Okay, looking at it very simply like that. I want to share something with you that's a little bit of a throwback to, I know I don't do math very much, and I've kind of, I'm glad that I've moved to more philosophy, but I'm going to show you something about long division um, with, let's say, uh, dividing by prime numbers, one divided by a prime number. And as you... Um, divide the prime into one, you're going to get a number less than, than one, obviously. You're going to get zero point. You know, um, those of you who are into number theory, know that the number will repeat itself. And it specifically will repeat itself after p minus one. This is a prime number, okay, after p minus one digits. Now, uh, two and five, we're not going to count those because those are factors of ten. And so in base ten, that will not be the case. But if you look at three, um, 3 will repeat itself, 0.333, well, every one digit, but that's also, if you think about it, every two digits, right? So it'll be after, either after P minus 1, or um, you could break P minus 1 down into halves and, or something like that, but it's still P minus 1, okay? So an example would be 7. 7 repeats itself after, after 6 digits, okay? I think it's 0.142857142857. Seven one four two eight five seven. If memory serves me, okay. So why is that? Well, why that is is here's one over p, and then after you get out to the p minus one digit uh, on top of your um, division, you'll have an a, and then you obviously are going to have a remainder where you you have the next you then have the next digit after uh, after that, but then that remainder just so happens to be one. Okay. And so then, as you bring your remainder up here down to get be, uh, have it divided by p again, uh, you'll have one over p like you had at the beginning. So after p minus one digits, it's going to repeat itself again, and then again. Okay. So if I have one over seventeen, it should repeat itself every sixteen digits. Now it's possible it would repeat itself every eight or every four. I don't know in that particular case, but it would still be every 16 digits. Okay, and this is just showing you a little bit more of that, that I bring it up here again, divide p into mod p, I get x, some natural number, but then, so then that x is what's above, um, would, would be a minus 1, but then I, pardon me, um, it'd be a minus 1 divided by p, but then I have to go ahead and repeat it again to where I have another, in the case of 17, I have that same, same repeat of the same 16 digits. Now, that's really cool if you think about it. I mean, there's a coolness to that. I can't, it, it's ineffable. There's no particular reason that that should be true. But it is. And there are numerous beautiful mathematical patterns like that. And I know I'm a little rusty on the math presentation thing. I understand that. So, but the, but the point is, there's you can see the beauty to that in other number theory theorems. I can't believe that that's just simply something that's imaginary. My opinion. C H is true. C 